Hello everyone, it's Friday and you're watching Within the Frame where we delve deeper into the top stories not only in South Korea but across the globe. I'm Kim bo -kyung. An advanced language model developed by OpenAI that generates human-like responses to a variety of tasks that is constantly learning and evolving. This is how ChatGPT first introduced itself when I asked it to write a news opening. In around two months, ChatGPT has attracted millions of users. Many have been in awe with its AI capabilities. Its introduction triggered a tech giant AI arms race and at the same time brought up certain ethical questions. How is our artificial intelligence going to change society? And how should state-of-the-art technology be regulated? For an in-depth analysis on the revolutionary Chet GPT, we invited Lee Soo Young, co-founder and CTO of Artificial Language Intelligence and Professor Emeritus at KAIST. Professor Lee, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to join. And we also have Professor Bernard Egger at Seoul National University joining live from Switzerland through, through Zoom. Professor Egger, welcome. Thanks for having me. All right, Professor Egger, first question to you. What is it about ChatGPT that has attracted more than 100 million people in just around two months? And what characteristics distinguish it from the many other artificial intelligence chatbots available? Well, ChatGPT, like its predecessors, ChatGPT 1, 2, 3, or BART, or Apple Siri, are so-called large language models. In a nutshell, these models work as follows. If you feed them the beginning of a text, such as in the morning, I, the models have a very good idea which word, word is most likely to follow next. In our example, in the morning, I, likely next words could be get or eat to finally say in the morning, I get up or in the morning, I eat breakfast. The models know this through a process called training. We feed them millions of texts with billions of words from which they learn which words are likely to appear next in a sequence of words. Um, so to generate an entire text, these models take their own generated output as their next input. If we assume that our model added the word eat to the input in the morning, I eat, the next sentence fragment to likely come out will then be breakfast or cereal. Now, for the difference between the models such as chat, GPT, the model behind Siri uh, or Google's just released Bart, there are basically two. Four. One, how large is the model, such as how much input can it remember? And two, what and how much data was used to train it? So in terms of the main difference between Chat GPT and other models is that Chat GPT was explicitly trained to generate texts that resemble human conversations. From a technological point of view, ChatGPT is very similar to other large models. So the, the only difference basically is the training process. Right. Uh, Professor Lee, then uh, ChatGPT is currently being called revolutionary right now. It mm -hmm. reportedly passed an MBA exam given by a Wharton professor as well as law exams. But some say that although it has high quality language skills, its mathematical capabilities are not that good. What can it do and what can it not do? Well, ChatGPT can memorize and extract important patterns very well. So it generates human-like sentences just because it learned those patterns from human sentences. Actually, many people, including myself, are worrying about that GPT just memorize patterns and combine them to generate new answers. However, its memory is not infinite. Currently, ChatGPT is believed to handle about 3,000 words to generate next word. The number becomes doubled from the previous GPT. But if you ask ChatGPT to find answers by combining information apart more than 3,000 words, it cannot generate good answers. So even after AlphaGo, many people thought artist may be the safest profession from AI. However, it may not be true. Similar to other professions, even the jobs requiring creativity are now at risk. AI is now generating emotional speeches, singing with the voice of deceased singers, making 
the natural images and even video with specific styles. Even from the last November, the ChatGPT became the most famous software around the world. Some artists are at risk. On the other hand, top level artists will work much more efficiently than ever before because AI assistant will generate many possible masterpieces and human artists just need to select something they like. So in summary, the most safest job is not generating masterpieces, but making decision on selecting which one is good. That's the job of human artist. And AI just assisting them to provide many different candidates. As you mentioned about the dancers, I think the robot dancer may not be good so far. So physical dancers, human dancers at the physical stage are the safest job at this moment. However, at the cyberspace, all the dancers will be replaced by AI dancers in the sun. Wow, interesting. Uh, now, Professor Egger, ChatGPT is based on GPT 3.5 with training based on 175 billion different parameters harvested from across the internet. The number already seems big, but uh, OpenAI is soon to unveil GPT 4 using up to 100 trillion parameters. First of all, please explain what these parameters are and if uh, it is upgraded, how will the latest version be better? Well, Intuitively, the number of parameters in an AI model can be viewed as the size of the model's memory, in a sense. So in other words, the more parameters we have, the more the, the model can remember. Technically speaking, a parameter is nothing else than a number that is used by the model to compute something. So assume if, you want, if we want to generate, uh, say, a model that predicts the weight of a human being. In its simplest form, we can use one value which we set to the average weight of, say, 1,000 people, such as 65 kilograms. 65 would be one parameter. We can improve that model by, for example, also letting it know the height of the person. Then the model can make a better prediction, such as the expected weight might be height times 0 0.9 minus 100. Now we have two parameters, 0 0.9 and 100. So these large models, they have billions of these parameters that are used when calculating the next word. So a model with 100 trillion parameters theoretically has more memory. It can learn more uh, of the relationships between words and take, uh, potentially be better than chat, uh, GPT or GPT-3. The problem will, however, be the training. So the more parameters we have, the more data we need to actually make good parameter values to learn the values of these parameters. So, so that will be a, an interesting uh, question to see whether we can actually do that. And uh, I would also like to add that Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenIP, has, has recently denied the claims and, and said, well, these are complete fabrication that GPT-4 has 100 trillion parameters. So we will see what, what actually happens. Yes, yes, we will have to see. Now, uh, Professor Egger, one more question to you, though. With ChatGPT's introduction to the word, the so-called AI arms race is getting fiercer right now. I mean, multiple tech giants have announced their own versions of AI chatbots from Microsoft, saying it will incorporate OpenAI's GPT technology into its Bing search engine, and Google announcing plans to roll out a bard like you have previously mentioned, and to Chinese tech giant Baidu joining with uh, Arnibot. Now, could you provide some insight into why these tech companies are investing in this area and how you think this AI arms race is going to structure the market in the future? Well, if, if you have used JetGPT yourself, you, 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 you probably had, had this experience, like how is this even possible? I mean, how, how can a computer generate text that really appears to be have some memory, react to the way we, we, we phrase our questions, react to our requests, even remember back, as Professor Lee said, some 3,000 words, but usually that's enough. So, so I think we will see lots and lots of similar con conversational chatbots appear in the near future. Um, so that the big tech companies, of course, uh, are racing to, to put out their own version. The technology is not particularly new. It has been around. It's just 
the way we train it and also a startups uh, will probably um, or already have built similar models the problem will be the training and that requires vast amount of data large number of people so so large companies will probably have an advantage over small startups Right, so technology itself is not that new, it's just a matter of how we train it, right. Now, but Professor Lee, South Korea's uh, own tech companies are also trying to join in this frenzy right now. Uh, Neighbor is such introduced search GPT, while Kakao is going to unveil its conversational AI based on its own uh, KO GPT. Now, compared to the AI engines of global tech giants, how does South Korea compare? Good question. So Korean language has quite different structures from the other popular languages in the globe. So although ChatGPT also answers simple questions in Korea, Korean its performance is quite limited. However, if the Google giants think they want to get in Korean market with whatever cost, they have the technology and money. Fortunately, Korean market is not that B, and therefore we may have niche market here. On the other hand, the global giant may want in the future, and then we need to set higher barrier before they come to Korean market and let the global giant decide not to look for Korean market. That means we need to build up our capability better for the Korean market. Actually, when I found a small startup company several years ago, I need to solve the important part of how to compete with the global big giant. And the answer was, is collaboration and competition. I think the, I would like to standing on the shoulder of a giant to see further. However, I still need to be big enough so that my eye is located higher than that of the giant and have the giant to see further. Otherwise, I'm just to be a parasite to the giant. So the big guys in Korea should compete with the global giant in the last language model market, while small startups try to utilize or collaborate and compete, compete with the big guys and work on small specialized market. Right, so collaboration at the same time, collab uh, competition would be the key for our South Korean companies to survive. Now, uh, Professor Egger, the artificial intelligence market size uh, is expected to grow, to hit, hit around 1.6 trillion US dollars by 2030 by uh, one uh, in research institute. Now, how can AI be fused into other industries and affect them? I mean, will the AI wave result in the creation of any new industries as well? Uh, specifically to, to ChatGPT and, and the other AI, I think we, we will see an acceleration of the already rapid adaptation of AI in, in many, many industries. So um, the technology behind the large language models is, is called transformers models is actually quite general. So these transformers, they can not only be used to generate text, they can also generate images or music, as Professor Lee has already mentioned. And such models exist. For example, DALI, also developed by OpenAI, is a model that generates images from a textual input. So more than anything, I expect uh, conversational AIs in the, the recent future to become uh, more wild, widely used by people as their personal assistants. So maybe finally, the smartphone will actually get smart to look things up, summarize information, generate text, and, and probably also generate reports for school assignments. Right, interesting. Now, uh, Professor Lee, we also need to talk about some worrying aspects as well. First, in terms of education. Now, New York City schools have already banned chat GPT amid fears that students could use it to cheat. But it's not just a problem with cheating right now. Access to an AI engine could make students less eager to learn and ultimately make them lose their critical thinking skills. Now, how do you believe the education sector should embrace AI in the right way? Yes, I has, AI has potential harm, but I also think its potential for benefit is much bigger than the potential harm. 
I think the benefit is bigger than we depend on how to use AI. So that's the most important question we should answer. I still remember old days when a pocket calculator first came, we are not supposed to bring the calculator to exam. But now you know what happened. Everybody used the calculator, even the smartphone has it inside there. I also used to say that after I started to use smartphone, I lost my capability to remember phone numbers of my friends, even my mother. But I cannot drive without navigator right now. So we cannot stop the wheel of history. So we only have choice to decide living with or without AI. I hope every human may decide to use AI for better life. We may educate our students to focus more on understanding other human and situation, not just memorizing, and also making proper decision, not for just to learn or mimicking other people. So the main education is not memorizing. The main education we need is understanding other people's mind because social and emotional learning becomes more important in the future. Right, right. So the focus should be on uh, understanding other people uh, instead of just memorizing all the information because right. AI is going to do that. Right. Uh, right. Professor Egger, another issue is credibility. Experts say AI bots can spread misinformation very effectively, meaning they deliver completely logical but incorrect information with confidence. How should this be dealt with? Yeah, this is, uh, in my view, the, the biggest uh, problem right now. So uh, these models, they, they generate text one word at a time. So basically what that means in difference to humans, in the middle of the sentence, the AI does not yet know how the sentence is going to end. Um, but it's also important to remember that the AI do not really act by themselves. So someone is directing the AI to generate certain texts on certain topics. So even, uh, even now we have misinformation and maybe now it's generated by, by, by humans. And probably in the future we can use ChatGPT and similar models to generate more effective misinformation, but it will be difficult to, to curb that. Open AI has, has tried to build a tool that detects whether a certain text was generated by ChatGPT itself. But uh, it turns out it's only about 25% accurate. So, so if, if, if we modify the text a little bit, probably nobody will be able to tell. So as, as a society, we, we will kind of have to come to terms with this. We, we need to discuss ways how we can make the best use of these new technologies. I agree with Professor Lee that the benefits are probably, potential benefits are much larger than, than the disadvantages, but we, we have to, to try to somehow uh, come to an agreement how we use that new technology because the potential for abuse is, is huge. Right. Now, uh, Professor Lee, since we have just a few minutes, I'd like to uh, tap on, you know, how we should regulate this AI. You know, uh, the chief technology officer at OpenAI, Mira Madrati, said it is not too early to regulate AI and that we all should consider how to govern the use of AI in alignment with human values. In what direction do you believe we should go? Yes, I agree. The use of AI should align with human value, that's the final goal. However, I do not agree that we should regulate or govern AI more toughly than human. We already have common senses and rules, how to use tools and how to deal with human. Do we need something different from those? We think AI as a tool or human or something between them for all the cases, we have all the answer already because for the tool, we like to use that tool for the benefit human and for the interaction with the human, we also like the social improvement, the welfare of a human. So let the uses of AI be helpful to the prosperity of human society and human well-being 
if AI is considered simply to human, we may add on more. Treat AI as you want to be treated. So AI is similar to the baby. If it's it or not she or her, she will do good for the human, provided we treat it nicely as companion or friends, not slave. In summary, I would like to say it this way. Please do not make special regulation just for AI. Just enforce the same rule to human and AI, provided they do the same job. Right, great insight. And, and it's really interesting how you uh, said that we need to treat AI like a baby. All right, unfortunately, this is all the time we have for today's edition. But thank you, Professor Lee and Professor Egger, for letting us know more about AI technology. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that's all for Within the Frame tonight. We will be back next Monday with more in-depth stories on the issues happening in South Korea and, of course, around the globe. Enjoy the weekend. Goodbye.